Good morning. I'm Reverend Dr. Candy Ashenden, the pastor of the Athol Congregational Church, and this is week three in our Lenten series. This morning, I invite you to think about how God has provided for us, and then to think about how we can provide for others. Please join me as we explore this topic. We join together as hungry eaters to be nourished by the food that you offer us. God of sustenance, give us this day our daily bread. As you care for the wheat fields that turn into bread and the vineyards that labor to produce sweet wine, tend to our bodies by feeding us what we need for healthy growth. God of abundance, give us this day our daily bread. The rich crops that you have prepared are now ready to be harvested by our hands and our hearts. Holy Spirit, come, give us this day our daily bread. O oh Lord, give us this day our daily bread. We pray for your great provision over our daily physical needs. Help us to trust in your provision each and every day. Ease our anxiety and worry and help us to trust in you. Lord, hear these prayers and move in our lives, for you are great and mighty and loving and know exactly what we need. Lord, give us this day our daily bread and help us trust that you know best for my life. Amen. Hi, guys. John's going to be doing the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed by thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Temptation, but deliver into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Bread is like the sun. It rises in the yeast and sets in the waste. Give us this day our daily bread. It's a familiar line, I'm sure, to most of you. It's from the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is something we recite every single Sunday in church. And in Athol, we have a tradition. 
where after every ministry team meeting, we stand up, hold hands in a circle, and recite the Lord's Prayer together. Give us this day our daily bread. But how often do we really think about what it means? I think there are two ways to look at it. Figuratively, spiritually, it means that we are looking for God to give us whatever we need for the day. That God, we are asking Him to provide our every need for that one day. But we also can take it literally, and we can think about the times that we break bread together with our families at the table. One of my favorite things is going to the 110 Grill. And since I've become gluten-free, it has become even more of a treat. It's become a treat because they make homemade gluten-free rolls. And since I've been gluten-free, bread, good bread, is hard to come by. And I love going in because they present me with a gluten-free roll. And the first thing I do is break it open and say, oh, it's warm. It's an unexpected delight. There you go. Oh, it's warm. Just out of the oven. Oh, man. I'm going to enjoy this. Who puts the daily bread on your table? Who is it that prepares the food for you? Your wife, your mother, your husband, your son, a friend? Maybe you do it yourself. But whenever and whoever does it, do you take time to appreciate the blessing of that food before you? There's a meme going around Facebook these days that says, who knew that the hardest part of being an adult would be figuring out what to eat every night? <laughs> that makes us laugh, but as what has been preparing meals for over 30 years for my family, it's not that funny. But really, it's not funny because I forget to be appreciative. I forget to take time to be grateful for the food that's before me. So this week, when you come to the table expecting food to be served by your hand or by someone else's, pause and take a moment and give thanks for the daily bread that you have received and be encouraged to then reach out and provide for others. Exodus continues, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. Bread from heaven. That's become an expression that harkens back to when Moses and the Israelites were wandering in the desert, close to starvation, and God promised to rain down bread from heaven upon them. And bread from heaven is similar to give us this day your daily bread, only instead of thinking about it as just what we need for the moment, it's thinking about it like special occasions, the unexpected blessings that fall down upon us and enter our world. Yet even as bread rained down from heaven upon the Israelites, they began to be complacent. They took it for granted. They grumbled and wanted more. They had forgotten that this was indeed a blessing that was raining upon them. Where did you most recently see God's presence? Did you drive up to Market Basket and have a parking place open up right in front of you? Did you walk into the Athol Savings Bank and have a teller greet you by name and smile at you? Did a promotion unexpectedly fall in your lap? These are not mere acts of luck and coincidence, but rather this is God providing for each of us. These are the blessings that God sends us. All of these are truly bread from heaven. And this bread as it comes down upon us reminds us that everything is an unexpected blessing. And we need to give thanks for these unexpected blessings. And as God seeks to continue to provide for us, may we continue to provide for others. The story of the loaves and fishes is one that is often told in churches. And even many folks who have never entered a church have heard of this miracle. It happened when Jesus was out on the hillside teaching people. And the hour grew late and folks were growing hungry. Jesus' disciples wanted to disperse the crowd and send them home to eat, but Jesus said, no, let's feed them. So the disciples found a young boy in the crowd who had five loaves and two fish, and Jesus blessed them, and suddenly there was enough to feed the huge crowd. 
Some people believe that this was a true miracle of Jesus, and food multiplied until there was more than enough to go around. Others believe that the little boy set an example of sharing, and suddenly everyone's small baskets were opened, and between them, none went hungry. But no matter your take on this story, the miracle is that God provides for us even in the face of inexplicable odds. What is offered may not always be what we think we need, but we are never left completely alone. Even today, we continue to plead with God to send the people home because we don't think we have the means to serve, house, feed, or love a big crowd. But maybe we do, if we just trust God a little bit more. When the pandemic hit, our church moved our once-a-month in-house community meals to drive through meals offered twice a month. We didn't know how we could afford to do this twice as often, but we stepped out in faith. And before we knew it, volunteers appeared, more donations flowed in, and more people's needs for food and fellowship were able to be met. Members of our church were brave, like the little boy, and stepped forward with their time and talents and offered to God what they had. God, in turn, blessed it and multiplied it. Small offerings brought about large gifts. Seeing this and giving thanks to God for how God provides for us, how can we not be moved? to go out and begin providing for others. I am the bread of life. When Jesus says that, it immediately calls to mind the story of the Last Supper. We picture Jesus in the upper room gathering with his disciples, and in that moment he offers words to them, and he offers them the ritual of breaking bread together. As he does that, he knows what is to come. And even in that moment of facing death, he takes the time to break bread with them and to offer them this example of a way they can continue to remember him as after he is gone and throughout their lives. This is the true sustenance of life that Jesus offers, the bread of life. In our world today, it's easy to get carried away and overwhelmed with the busyness of life. Bills pile up, work accumulates, and Children's needs overwhelm us. Caring for our elderly or aging parents takes precedence and becomes a priority for us. In these moments, all of these things begin to fill up not only our brain space, but our heart space. And as that happens, we are tempted to forget the true sustenance of life. It's true that we all need food and water, clothing and shelter. We all need the essentials of life, but the true sustenance is the love of God. When we have babies that are born and aren't loved or aren't cared for or held in the first few days of their life, we often call them failure to thrive babies. And that's because they don't have the essential things that are needed to nurture them and help them grow into all they can be in the world. We don't tend to use that term as people get older, but in fact, when elderly people are left out or isolated or left alone, they too can be failure to thrive and not be all that they can be in the world. It is the love of God, the true sustenance, the bread of life that changes everything for each of us. It changes our meager existence into a joyous one. It offers us hope in our dark world. It offers us community and encourages us to join together in community with others who equally want to share the love of God with others. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Jesus is offering us the true sustenance, the grace that overflows, the love that fills us up so completely that we can't help but have it bubble over and share it with others in the world. As we remember all the ways in which God provides for us, let us fill ourselves up and go out and seek to provide for others. Paul's letter to the Corinthians talks about celebrating communion. And as is Paul's style, it doesn't mince words because Paul says he keeps seeing people come to the communion table and they're bearing grudges against each other. They have divided factions, fractured families, and they're in arguments with their neighbor. This is not how we're supposed to come to the table. 
and Paul tells them that this is not what the table is all about. When we come to the communion table, we are asked not just to set aside our differences, but to offer them up to God and lay them down. For when we are here, we are supposed to take of one loaf and take of one cup, celebrating the unity that we all feel because we have found a God who loves us, because we have found our faith. As we come to this table, we prepare ourselves and we feel that unity, not the things that divide us, but the things that bring us together. And we reflect on Jesus' life and how he came, how he taught, how he lived, how he died, and how he rose again. Bread broken is a symbol of our faith. For even when Jesus was about to be betrayed, even when Jesus was about to be crucified, still Jesus gathered his disciples and offered them a ritual that would forever unite them and forever bring them together over the breaking of the bread. 2,000 years later, here we are, still observing that symbol, still participating in that ritual, that ritual that Jesus taught us so that we may come together as one, so that we may remember the power of love and the power of hate and the most important thing that love prevail over all. I invite you at this point to open your Lenten bag for this week. And as you pull out the item, prepare yourself to take communion together, for this is the symbol of our faith, and later in the service we will share it together. And let us remember that as God has provided for us, we must continue to provide for others. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory in each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Come, for all is prepared and ready for all of you who seek to follow Christ more closely in your lives. As we prepare to come to this table, I invite you to lay down the burdens you are carrying and to join me in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your mighty acts of salvation for all of the gifts and the talents you have given to each of us, and most importantly, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for his ministry, for his teaching, for his example among us. We give you thanks. Come, Holy Spirit, enter this bread and this cup so that when we take it together, it may so infuse us and inspire us that we may go out into the world to serve you. Come, be present, we pray. Amen. On that night, when Jesus gathered his disciples together in the upper room, after having dinner together and after giving thanks for it, Jesus took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In that same manner that night, Jesus took the cup, and again, after giving thanks to God for it, Jesus poured it out and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. I need you.
I invite you now to take communion with me. The bread of life. And the cup of forgiveness. Take and drink. As we leave this table, let us go forth giving thanks that we are one at this table and let us hold on to that spirit of unity everywhere we go. Amen. Please pray with me. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for all that you provide us with. We give you thanks for your constant love and attention, for the feeling of your presence around us in both good times and bad. And we give you thanks for your sustaining presence in the lives of others. We lift up this morning all of those who are battling COVID, all of those who are suffering losses related to it, and all who are grieving for any reason of loss in their lives. We pray this morning continually prayers for Barbara and for Vera, and we pray for all of your people, whether we know them by name or we do not. We lift them up to you, O oh God, knowing that you know whatever they might need in this moment, and praying that you will meet their need and find others around them to be their support and their strength. Gracious God, as we know and give thanks that you provide for us. Be with us and inspire us always to continue to provide for others with the strength and encouragement of your love. In your name, O oh God, we pray. Amen. As we go forth from this place, let us give thanks for all that God has richly provided for us and let us be motivated by thanksgiving and gratitude to go out and provide for others. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Hi everyone. Today I wanna to share a mission offering opportunity with you. Our church will be participating in the One Great Hour of Sharing campaign. One Great Hour of Sharing provides emergency relief, disaster rehabilitation, refugee support, development assistance, and COVID-19 emergency support to help families, churches, and communities. This campaign is supporting needs such as hunger, unemployment, loss of income and housing, and access to health care. 100% of your money will go to these relief efforts. If you're able, please consider donating to the One Hour of Sharing campaign. Thank you and God bless.